Are you in every way woman? Welcome to Every Way Woman. So a lot of people in my generation are wondering if we really need to get married anymore. You're married, yeah. Amber. You yeah. think so? Yes, I'm married and I love it. If you can go back, you do it all over again. Not to say that. Marriage can be very difficult. It's a work in progress. But um, I enjoy it. And so, like, but if I could wait a little bit longer to get married, I would. I would wait. Why? Just what do you think that would have changed? Um, I think I could have maybe dated more, had those experience or, you know, dating and, and just kind of seeing my options and different things out there instead of just saying, oh, man, he followed me to California. Let's get married and, and start a family, you know? Yeah, see, I would be inclined to say no, that you don't have to be married unless you're planning on having children. Um, but I was talking to a, a woman, a very successful woman, who had been, was in, in a relationship, then they had been together for, they might as well have been married, 12, 13, 14 years. Wow. And then one day they just walked away. They just, they just, they just walked, walked away. away. They just walked away from each other. And she went wow. back and she said, you know, I, at the time I thought I was doing the right thing because I just thought we fell out of love. Mm -hmm. But then when I look back and I'm thinking, you know how sometimes couples grow in and out of love and when you're married you're kind of forced to deal with that? Mm -hmm. And then you, you have to make a hard decision. And she said if she had waited it out a, a couple years or so, they probably would have stayed together because they're still friends. Well, they talk to each other. But that's interesting. I have a friend whose parents got divorced and then they got remarried because they, mm -hmm. they did have that ebb and flow in their relationship and they found their way back to together. each other. Wow. It was a really beautiful story. But, you know, even my ex-boyfriend, I really wanted to get married. You know, I grew up in the Midwest. It was always a big dream of mine. I dreamed of the wedding. And he didn't really want to get married. Mm. He said, you know, I, I really like our relationships and I would do a ceremony, but I don't think I believe in legally having to get married. Wow. And I don't know how I feel about that. I think for me, it's always been opposite. Everybody always wanted to marry me. <laughs> but I never wanted because to you're married. Latina. They want you to cook, yeah, clean, do the dishes. Right now. <laughs> I've been proposed to more than once. But, okay, but now... I actually do want to get married. Okay, like, wait. I, I, I want to go I, back to the like you've been proposed to more than once. Yeah, okay, so I have been waiting. Or by different, people? different people. Oh wow! Yeah. My whole life, and I've dreamed of this moment, and I cannot believe that this and girl nonchalantly no. says that no. it's happened to me more than once. Because I had goals, but now I feel like I'm I'm achieving them, and now I feel like you, okay, did you say no? Income. Wait, did you yeah, say I said no? I even threw Wait, the ring once. That's another. You said not. Right. She said no cracker jack rings. No cracker jack rings. That's another topic. Wait. I was like, no. You got it. You got it like that. Okay. I got it like that. But now it's like I think it's karma or something. Now it's like I feel like I do want to get married. I I do look at not obviously with the first one that comes. Right. But. I'm not that picky. So you know, wait, you know what I mean see, now? See, Even I though actually, it looks like <laughs> See, I'm the one. I definitely do want to get married. Um, I know that in, my family is from the South, and I know in a lot of Southern traditions, mm -hmm. there's a lot of women who will be a 20-year girlfriend. I'm like, that is not for me. I am not doing it. And, you know, so, and, and my parents were married 35 years till death. Did they part? Mm -hmm. uh, and so I want that for my life. Now, I'm not going to settle for just any old body, but. So yeah. how long are you going to be in a relationship before you say, make it or break it we're well, doing this you, or not well you know what quite frankly given recent events my answer on that has changed because i was you know i just broke up with someone of four years because he you know we were at the pooper get off the pot and he wouldn't get off the pot i said okay well i will mm -hmm. um i think oh. it doesn't take four years to get to know somebody were you oh, heartbroken by that oh no it takes well, you know, it takes more than four well, years to get but, to know but somebody you know what? that's that's that it doesn't take four years to know if you want to spend the rest of your life with them because no, i think the the most the most, uh, you know, basic parts of who you are have been revealed at that point. So it's like either you know or you don't. And hmm. was I heartbroken? No, because I was the one who initiated it. I saw the big picture. I saw the, you know, I saw the events unfolding or in, the, in this case, not unfolding. And it, it became apparent to me that this wasn't you know, going to happen. So I just... To be like completely candid in this conversation, and that kind of happened to me in my last relationship. And I thought I could get him to love me again or love me more, or want that, because he wasn't at that point in the relationship, and I was. Mm -hmm. And I thought, like, I don't know, maybe if I do something differently, I could get him to love me even more. And it didn't work, and for me, that really crushed well, me. Let me tell you, should, you but, can make a man. The, yeah. And the first time you, I mean, they, they, the first they, they time smell you desperation. Out, you won't forget it again. But I don't want, I don't think it was desperate. I just want, I don't, maybe it was. Uh, I, I know, know, I just wait, wait, but just hear yourself yeah. say that again. What can I do to make him want to love me again? That sounds yeah. 
usually yeah. the first time you learn that lesson that you can't make somebody do something they're not going to, you can't mm. make them love you. Right. Either yeah. they do or they don't. The first time you learn that lesson, you typically don't forget it, though. Mm -hmm. All right, I haven't forgotten my lesson. Let's just put that out. Okay, I learned it. I'm not doing it again. She's a therapy. But I, mean, I, have a, I, have, I know somebody. somebody to like love us. And really, we need to take that time to just kind of love ourselves and reconnect with ourselves. Well, and you're taking that time right now. I am. I am. But at the same time, this is another point I wanted to make. I'm really scared to have that relationship that my parents had. Like, mm. I, you know, they're not together no more. And they were together for 25 years. Yeah. And I'm scared and to give somebody. Or? Right. They got divorced. Mm -hmm. um, but it just, it, it gets me scared to go for somebody like, like how my dad was. I mean, as mm -hmm. much as I love him, you know, mm -hmm. the, the mm -hmm. actions that he made, which is kind of hard to say it here, right. it just breaks me. And I don't want to find myself a guy like that. Right. I don't you know? think you will. You know what? Or all because men like that. You know? You're you know different. What I mean? You're different. You no, know who no. you are, and your mom is who you are. You're not her. You're just a piece mm -hmm. of what she has. I'm a lot like her, though. Invested <laughs> in you. Yeah. Because you're a piece of what you've yeah. Yeah. been invested into. But you're not that way. But you just, know? it's the whole investing, but, investing that much, and then just, you just break up a family. No, yeah, no, I, I get, I get it. Hard. I get it. I totally get it. It was a really hard for me. I felt like a failure. I felt a, a lot of, and also because it wasn't accepted mm -hmm. by my family and by his family. I mean, they all think I'm evil. But, oh. but moving forward, mm -hmm. you know, I'm, I'm, I'm dating someone now. I think he's a really great guy. I mean, it's relatively new. But I, get, I, I think about that. Do I want to get married again? Is it necessary for me to be married again? Um, do I have to? Do we have to make that legal commitment to each other? And I thought, no, I never want to do it again. But well, someone had had said Madison, to me, Madison, let's continue the conversation when we get back. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Welcome back. I want to continue the conversation, Madison. You're yes. Saying. So I, what I was saying is, is that um, I was telling this to another a, a divorcee, and I had said, no, I never want to get married again, but I'm meeting, dating someone I think is really great, and I don't think he wants to either. And she kind of took a step back and said, why? Yeah. Why would you not expect that he have some kind of legal responsibility for you to make sure that you're taken care of when you get older, when you're not, you know, when your time has come, and why wouldn't he expect that from you? So it gave me a different perspective on that as well, you know. There is that legal thing. Who's well, taking care of who? In, you know, in 2008, when the economy crashed, a lot of families crashed as well because yeah. they were both legally responsible for each other and on each other's credits. When one lost their job and went bankrupt, it hurt the entire family. Yes. I mean, is that a reason to possibly avoid legally getting married? I think some people use that as a reason. Um, but ultimately, if you're a team, you're a team. Right. Mm -hmm. and That's it, the truth. Yeah. My credit got my she was saved through marriage. <laughs> well, I, I wanted to talk about in kind of moving onto a new leaf, being a stay-at-home mom. And I know you were a stay-at-home mom for some years, weren't you? Yes, for a long time. For a long time. How long? Probably still a stay-at-home mom. Um, for about eight years. Is that what you wanted to do when you became a mother? No. I think I wanted the whole career. I wanted to be in D.C. listening to jazz music, drinking wine, laughing. <laughs> and I didn't get that. I got married and I, <laughs> life went bloop. <laughs> I had my daughter and um, fell in love with her, you know, and, and, and the whole family thing. But I still strive for my career. But now it's more like, okay, it was so important. I, this is so crazy. I took her to school. I was working for a fashion designer. Mm -hmm. And I took her to school, and it, you know, when you work do fashion, it's overnight, sure. it's long hours. And I took her to school, I picked her up, and she could sit up. And they were like, oh, Miss Love, she has one tooth. And I was like, Hoo -ah! and I took Aww. her out of school, quit the job and everything. Aww. I was like, yeah, get over. <laughs> 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 and then I Cheryl, do you think when me. you become a mom that you would sideline your career? Sure, I was anti kids. What did, what did you do? What did you do? What did you do? She's anti kids. I sure love the babies. And I know that I'm going to love mine. Um, but I mean, I grew up in a household where I had a working mother. And quite frankly, I, I spent a lot of time on my education. I spent a lot of time, you know, in the workplace trying to build myself a career. I'm not willing to have done all of that in vain. 
You know, yeah. I have goals that I want to accomplish. I don't think that would ever be in vain because it's made you the right. woman you yeah. are. You know what, that's true. You know, but then how do I demonstrate to my little girls, you know, my well, hypothetical little girls. You might that, okay. So okay, I, and how do I demonstrate to my son you know, the kind of woman that he should be striving to try to, uh, you know, try to meet, you know, someone who is driven, someone okay. who, is, who has yes. goals. And However, who, I want you to keep you know, in mind that, that one mm -hmm. of the things that you're doing when you have children is you are raising a person, yes. right? Yes. And um, who are you putting in charge of raising your person, your people, if you aren't there? Well, you know what? That's something I'm going to have to face. I'm, Absolutely. Know, I, I, that's a sacrifice. So, but, 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 but is it I, because, I, see, but, for me, I, I, I mean, I, yes, I'm a working mom. But it is not my ideal. Right. If I, I, I firmly believe that children need their mothers and their fathers, but they need their mothers primarily, right? Nature designed that Absolutely. way yeah. until about five or six. Mm -hmm. Not saying that you can't ever go back to having a career, but there is a certain point where their informative viewers are there. You know, and I thought I have guilt. I, I swear to, I have guilt about putting my kids into care of someone else's care. Because they are learning somebody else's values. Mm -hmm. They are learning really somebody else's my habits. Mother, and you my know what? They are learning. At home. And I'm really grateful she did because we have such an unbreakable bond. But even then, I thought, well, I want a career. And maybe I'll let my mom kind of look after my kids. And the older I get, I think, like, like you're saying, Madison, I want to be the one who yeah. helps guide that little right. person who sees, you know, the and world. Say, and I, I, you know, but the, something. I enjoy going to the PTA meetings. Mm -hmm. I enjoy knowing that I'm bringing cupcakes and I'm helping the class. And even though in, in, to my mom, she was like, why are you doing this? Mm -hmm. I, I would give it up any day and I still do it now. I still, every job that I do find, that I do try to work at, yeah. I still try yeah. to make sure Anna, that I have time for my children. I had a working mom. So she was, you know, working, both parents were working. Mm -hmm. But for me, like, I just don't want to change the diapers. You know what? And, but <laughs> I'm going to pay somebody for that. that. <laughs> in, in another I'm just vein, saying. In another vein, you know, I don't mind changing diapers, but I'm sorry. I need intellectual stimulation. And, <laughs> well, trying, and just trying to turn Hang on, hang on a minute. I'm, oh. I'm going to go crazy. You okay. know. Okay. Well, and you can read a book. At the end of the day, you can read a book. Adult conversation. <laughs> you know? You but know, but you have a partner. You have a partner, right? for you. It doesn't necessarily work. Thing is, you, you don't assign yours to no, me. No, no, not saying that. But you know, if your career comes first, there's nothing wrong with choosing to have a career over having a family. Mm. There's that's absolutely okay nothing too. wrong with that. We'll be right back with more Every Way Woman. <laughs> too pink? Too purple? Too much coral? How do you find that perfect red lipstick just for you? We'll find out next when we come back. Ladies, we all know that not every red lipstick is created equal, so Anna's here to help us figure out what we need to do to find <laughs> that perfect shade. I'm like, no, no, red no, no. lips, red, the red lipstick, oh my gosh, it's like finding that little black dress. It's hard. Girl. And it's a necessity, but <laughs> I can admit, I don't have a red lipstick. I'm too nervous to buy one. Every time I put it on, it's orange. When the, when the average woman goes into the department store, what's the first thing you do? You go to the makeup, right? Of makeup course. section. And then when you go to the makeup section, you end up buying the first thing you see. Try you, before you buy. You gotta try it on. Don't be afraid to ask the person behind that counter to help you, that's why they're there. And don't be afraid to say no, not today. Walk around with it, yes. check it out. And what different I like brands. to do, exactly, not only different brands, but different stores. So figure out that perfect shade. Yes. Then wear it to the drugstore and buy it $20 cheaper. I am, I am happy you mentioned that. And that's one of the reasons I brought the brand that I actually brought. Okay. Because a lot of people can't spend those, what, $16 on a lipstick. No, I so mean, what do you have? let's be real. You yeah. know, the average person, you want to find a good deal. So we have NYX. Okay. And uh, this is a matte red lipstick. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is go ahead and put it on my hand. And I heard that this is actually a really great way to test it with your skin tone. Exactly. But what does skin tone even mean? Girl, that's a whole new different scientific. No, exactly. I'm but a scientist. I will, I will explain it just okay. because when it deals with skin tones, it, you have to look at your own skin tone because there's different undertones. But I don't even know what that means. People are like, you're so, blue, you're orange. <laughs> there's different know? undertones, which is blue, yellow, and olive. So okay. there's different undertones for different complexions, which are light, medium, and dark complexion. 
you know? So like as for me, this, the texture mm -hmm. of the lipstick is matte, so it's pretty dry. That's why I don't want to put it on the model because it's a little bit harder. You got to put it through the tube. We want to be clean. So um, this is pretty much how it looks. And what about our beautiful, lovely model, Madeline, today and her skin tone? She has a little bit more of the yellow complexion, so I'm going to go ahead and use the makeup brush. And again, we're using uh, NYX. And what color is that? It's 511. 511. <laughs> but you know what? It's the only uh, cranberry color that they have. It's actually okay. one of my favorites. It's sure. the one that I always wear, so people. Okay, so um, this one is not matte. So while I'm putting it on her, it's a little bit more shinier and a little bit more cranberry. It has almost like a satin finish to yes, it. Yes, and it, it's beautiful for the medium undertone, medium complexion. And do you have to use the brush? Because I just put it right if, on. If you're a makeup artist, yes, to be clean. Uh, but at the same time, um, if you're doing it on yourself, no. Obviously, you can use the tube, but it's just, you know health cleaning. Is it <laughs> essential that I use a liner? You know, because when I put it on, it is all over the place. Eyes, the, liner, the liner is really good to go ahead and um, plump up your lips to okay. make them look fuller. So sure. you know what? Yeah, use a liner. Uh, for her, I'm not going to use a, a liner because she already has beautiful lips. <laughs> and how do I avoid that bleed? Because if I do wear a bright color, sometimes it ends up below my lip or above the lip. Okay, for that, you don't want to use the shiny one. So with, okay. with, for you, you should stick to the matte one. So the okay. first one that I actually tried on. A matte so one. So I won't bleed. bleed. Number one, that's the first trick. The second trick is use a liner for you, so it won't bleed. Okay. Okay, that's my trick to you. And um, there's just so many things you can do with red lips. Don't, you know, you don't want it boring. Don't keep it boring. So I have a little trick. What's what I trick? like to do is just use any at home gloss or any you know cheap gloss that you find you don't have it doesn't have to be like a big brand can it be a clear gloss yes okay. it doesn't have to be colored Great. right now i'm using a pink one just because i want to <laughs> but i'm gonna go ahead and dip it into some red glitter oh this and is an arts and crafts project yes, right here you don't want to eat it okay so don't eat it <laughs> but <laughs> this what is not a dinner red what you're gonna go ahead and do it's probably for a photo shoot or a night out party don't party. Vegas. You look, young. <laughs> you look too young. But um, this is pretty much what I'm doing, which is just going, dipping it into that and then putting it on her lips, which is just gives you a little bit more of a, you know, wilder side, not keeping it so boring. Oh, that is wild. That is stunning. That is going to make sure you leave your mark on any man, <laughs> woman, Glitter. or glass. You know which one is yours. <laughs> but at the end of the night, do you have a secret on getting that lipstick off? A wipe, a wipey. Just a makeup, a makeup wipe? wipey, definitely. Yeah, definitely you want to take that off. If it's not already off by the end of the day, the, the whole glitter one, um, uh, definitely a wipey or some um, makeup remover. Oh, thank but you yes, very much. It. You look lovely, Madeline. I will no longer be afraid of the red lipstick. More on Every Way Woman. Stay tuned. Coming up next, more Everyway Woman. Do you know the number one medical reason that keeps women home from work? Stay tuned for Everyway Woman for the answer. Do you know the number one medical reason why women do not go to work on Mondays? Today, Dr. Sherry Thomas is here with the answer. The answer is bladder infections. Ba if I had a bladder infection, I wouldn't tell anybody that. So where did they get that statistic from? Well, it turns out women get one or two bladder infections a year. Okay. And most of us drink a little bit more water and try to clear it ourselves. But some women just get recurrent infection after recurrent infection. And it keeps them out of work. And it is the number one cause of lost days really? for women. Yes. So I'm not sure where they get the statistics, <laughs> but yes, yeah, I agree with you. I wouldn't well, call it. I thank you cold. for that stat because I'm in human resources. So now when my staff comes in and they say they have the flu, it could be a bladder infection. Right. <laughs> but it's, good. it's important to follow up on that. Right. So when you get your bladder infection, you may have an antibiotic at home and take it, but follow up with your doctor and get that urine culture to make sure the bladder infection went away. William, before we get, what are some of the symptoms that oh. a person can... 
the symptoms are easy. Okay. Uh, burning with urination. Okay. Uh, urgency, frequency. Uh, you may even try to urinate and nothing comes out. Or women may have blood in their urine. And that blood in the urine is a very big concern if you're over 40. You want to run straight to your doctor and get that worked up to make sure it's just a bladder infection. Is there anything that I could do preventative? Because I've had them before and they are awful. Is there anything that I could do? Very simple and very inexpensive. And what is that? Drink eight glasses of water a day. Ah! <laughs> water is the water. solution to all that pain? Water, not coke, <laughs> not, not alcohol, but water. Okay. And if you're menopausal, uh, it turns out using a little vaginal estrogen helps because it helps change the pH. Okay. Um, all of us can eat a little bit more lactobacillus, so we can do that in either Greek yogurt okay. or just take some lactobacillus over the counter, and that helps give us friendly bacteria in our gut. Okay, okay. So I didn't drink the water. I have all the symptoms. I'm full-blown now, with, and I have my antibiotics. Is there anything that I should be pay, pay, excuse me, paying attention to while I have the bladder infection? So you have antibiotics and you're yes, going to take them. Yes, I do. Them. Yeah. So, so take your antibiotics okay. and make sure that you take every one of them your doctor gave you. And when you're done, follow up and get a culture to make sure it went away. Because that's where we get the recurrent infections. People don't take all their antibiotics or they don't follow up. And a month or two later, they have it again. Well, it turns out that same infection was just suppressed, but it's now brewing again. The other thing is when you're taking your antibiotics, if you're getting more sick, Mm -hmm. You can't keep down fluids. You're running a temperature. That's not just a bladder infection. That's a kidney infection. And you okay. need to get right into the emergency room hospital right away. When you get a kidney infection, that's serious. So a, a kidney infection is an extension of a bladder infection? You, you can't, is that how that works? Yes. So many times we get urgency frequency and right. we blow it off. Oh, I'm tough. I'm a woman. I can survive that. And then it brews for a while. We can actually get a kidney infection. Okay. So the kidney infection you want to get on right away because that can be serious. Remember, before antibiotics, that's how people died, and that's how you lost a kidney because we couldn't treat it. So let's say I'm in the, I have a bladder infection. This happened to me before, and the antibiotics are not working. Do I go back to my doctor and ask for different antibiotics? Can I mix antibiotics? Mm, yes. How so, do I make it go away? <laughs> yeah, you know, well, you don't want to be your own pharmacist and start mixing <laughs> antibiotics. So immediately, you start your antibiotic. Within a day or two, you mm -hmm. should start feeling better. If mm -hmm. the day three you're not, call your doctor, get back in. A lot of times, as I am actually a urogynecologist, so I take care of a lot of women with recurrent bladder infections, I'll obtain a little bit of urine from you through the urethra to make sure the organism you're growing, we get the right antibiotic for that organism. And that is so important. Okay. So the key is, one, to get to the doctor, two, to continue the antibiotics because, you know, once I start feeling well, and I do this all the time, I may have 30 pills in a bottle, but by day pill number 10, I'm feeling good, and I'm like, oh, I don't need to take any more pills. That's not good, right? Right, because you don't want to just suppress the organisms. You want to clear them up. You don't mm -hmm. want to have that infection a month later and then, and then take what's left in the bottle, and then two months from now you have the worst infection that most antibiotics won't treat. Why are, they, why are bladder infections so painful? Why are they, I mean, they hurt. Because it's an infection in the bladder, and that's why we see blood sometimes. Okay. It's an infection that is irritating, and the bladder just wants to get rid of the infection, so it contracts and cramps. What else can cause a bladder infection besides what you've mentioned? Well, the common causes of a bladder infection are sexual activity. Oh, okay. Uh, that's why people stress, don't say they have them. Stress <laughs> and travel. So after sexual activity, get up urinate and drink a big glass of water. When you travel, make sure you're drinking lots of water. And other things like spinning, um, um, wearing too tight a pants. May, you may just need to you know, change those thongs for some granny underwear. Or, <laughs> or better yet, go without. Now, I don't know if they're going to change the thongs for some grannies, but I do. <laughs> I do. Okay, so, and then after sexual activity, I should urinate. And real quick, what if I can't urinate? What should I do real quick? That's because you're not drinking enough water. Oh. Drink that big glass of water. <laughs> okay, you've helped me because now I know when my staff calls in that they they have a bladder infection and they didn't want to tell me. They called it something else. Dr. Thomas, it was a pleasure, pleasure having you. Listen, you cannot take care of others unless you take care of yourself first. Stay tuned for more Everyday Women. Every Way Woman gives back to the community. Go to everywaywoman.com to find out how you can match our donations of undergarments for needy kids. Thanks for getting to know Every Way Woman.
I'm an everyday woman, 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 in every way, yeah, yeah, I'm living my life, 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 living day.